uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary on Nantucket. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us. Um, we're the biggest firm outside of Boston. Um, but, I, but as a result, everybody gets to do what they like. I like elder law, um, and that's all I do. So this show is meant to kind of, I want to say it was meant to supplement the seminars that I do at the Salt Marsh, but they're really not. Um, the goal of this show is, if you've been to any of my presentations, you've seen my friends Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. You know their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you're on Nantucket, you want to stay here. You don't want to go to Martha's Vineyard. You don't want to go anyplace else. And the question is, how can you do that? And what program should you know about in order to be able to do that? So in order to know that, <clears throat> excuse me, I convinced my friend Allison Forsgren to be my co-host and she keeps coming up with these great people and programs among others this one. So Allison tell us about our guest and about this program. Well this program is about <clears throat> the Nantucket Wheelers which is a wheelchair biking program for the residents of our island home. A wheelchair biking program. A wheelchair biking program. And Darcy Creech is our guest today and she was the founder. So tell us how that started. Well, I was looking for something, um, you know, a way to contribute to the community here and nothing was really making my heart sing. And I was watching YouTube on Valentine's Day and this video came up and it said what it, it was called What is Love? And it was a man who um, put together one of these wheelchair bikes for his wife who had Alzheimer's. And like 30 seconds into the video, I was in tears because it was so beautiful. It was. They had a relationship, you know, they used to bike a lot and, um, you know, she couldn't really get out anymore. And so when he took, had somebody attach a wheelchair to the front of his bicycle and they removed the front wheel, they put the wheelchair there, pedaling around and he had put a, a crown on top of her bike helmet. It was like a little princess crown and he said, you know, she's been the wind under my wings my whole life. It's my turn to give back to her and, um, you know, just to show God's love. And I, and I just thought that that was so beautiful. And then, I mean, I really did feel like the Holy Spirit just like dropped it in my heart as this is the, this is the project that you've been looking for. Are you gonna take the assignment? And this I thought it was right so thing. amazing. I just knew it was the right thing. And then it was, our, it, that was February, but you know, I thought, all right, well, you know, come July, I'm gonna figure out how much money we need to launch this program. and. The bikes are about $10,000 each. So I figured three bicycles to make it a fun event for multiple people to go out together so it's like a group I see, and you're excursion. not actually taking a regular bike and modifying it. This is like a, this is like a whole construction, this, the bike with the... Well, I've, I've, I actually emailed him and I yeah. said, where, do you, where can we get this bicycle? And he said, well, this was a one of a kind, but they are making them in Europe. In Europe, it's, it's actually um, pretty common. And so I looked and there was a factory in the Netherlands and my son Peter happened to be over in Europe and I said, I know you've only got one weekend left and all your friends are going to Paris and Rome, but I really need you to go to the factory to, to see which bike we should get because they're expensive. I don't want to order the, the wrong kind of bicycles. Okay. And originally we were going to get a bike that the wheelchair went on a platform and Peter tried that bike out and he said, mom, it's just, it's way too cumbersome. This is the other bike that you want. And the interesting thing was is that Peter was in his 20s, um, you know, pretty focused on his self and his career and school and all that. But when I said to him, I would, I, not only do I want you to go to the factory, I want you to go to find somebody to take out. So there was an institution where there was a boy that it was his age that was institutionalized. He took that boy out for a ride and he said, Mom, it, it like, I just can't even tell you how it made me feel to be able to do that for him, to be able to take him out. He was not verbal and he was, you know, making noise and clapping and he just said, I, I just can't believe what a beautiful experience that was. So I knew from the beginning that not only was the program going to bless the residents, but all the volunteers. And like and that's at, what they really feel. That's what the they feel say. it. The, the the volunteers just they don't even they don't even realize that they're going to be the benefits of the program. You know, you think you're you're doing it for the residents and then right. you realize, "Oh my gosh, like 
all it takes is a little bit of my time and you make somebody's, you know, the, we took one lady out and she said, you made my year. You made my year. I mean, never thought she was gonna get out in the fresh air again. But it's also companionship, it's building relationships. It's not just about the ride, it's about going and picking, picking up your, your peep at Island Home and you well, know so, that. Well, so tell us how you got the money for the bikes and sort of the lead up to the launch, which okay, was like in so September or October? I just thought, okay, July is a great time to raise money on Nantucket, but I don't, I'm not gonna you know, spend a whole year. People are either gonna love the idea or they're not, they're either, they're either gonna be on board or they're not. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna do a, um, it wasn't GoFundMe, it was Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Indiegogo is for non, a nonprofit fundraising platform. So I, was, I said, all right, we're gonna raise $35,000 in 35 days. And we, raised, we ended up raising $42,000. And the thing that was so amazing about it was that we had the whole community behind it. We had everybody from, um, the Nantucket Leatherheads, which is like the Fireman's Harley David Davidson Motorcycle Club, to um, people, you know, the Nantucket Yacht Club. It was like everybody thought it was an amazing idea, and they just got behind it, and we got the money. And then um, another important thing was that we partnered with the Community Foundation for Nantucket. So all the donations go to the Community Foundation. So they're all like tax deductible. Not they're all tax right, deductible. Right, right. And um, the Community Foundation pays for all of our invoices. So we, so we never touch the money personally. And that gives people confidence, you know, that, okay, it's not like a little bit for them, a little bit for the people who are running it. It's just so um, clean and clear and, um, you know, just makes it a great place to donate. And, and when you were doing the promo, like, w w did you do like a video so that people could see this? Because it is, it's hard to imagine, you know? We just had a picture. We just had like just one picture um, of a nursing home that I found that was doing the program um, down south. And I just like put one, of the, put one of their pictures up. But then you did a website and... Well, uh, eventually we did a website and, you know, once we got the funding, we... We, we had a, a platform to, for people to go to, yeah. And so then, how did you introduce it at Our Island Home? Oh. <laughs> well, so it was actually a little bit of a rocky start. Um, they thought the idea was a little bit crazy, and... I bet some of the, somebody said, oh, liability, oh my liability, God. Liability, yeah. and they were like, this is crazy, we're not doing it, and, and I was literally in tears. I, I said, are you kidding me? We We've, you know, bought all the bicycle. Like I just didn't, I never thought anybody would ever say no. I never, I mean, I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, I, so we bought the bicycles, we trained everybody, and then there was hesitation. Um, and so what happened was Allison decided, you know what? Allison's been with us since the beginning. And she was like, well, you know what? I want to take my dad out. My dad biked his whole life. He loves biking. I'm going to take my dad out. And then I got permission to take somebody's husband out. She was like, I really want Don to go out. You can take him out whenever you want to take him out. And then we had another man, David Wirth, who loved the bicycles. And he just said, I'm going out. I don't need anybody's permission. I'm going out. So the three of them went out and they came back and they were high as kites. They ran into people they hadn't seen in years. They went to the Surfside Beach and had ice cream. They were so on fire. That was great. That was so the nurse at Island Home said, after like two outings that we had, and she, she was like, at the end of the first week, she said, oh my gosh, I wish I had done a scale of depression. You know, she said, because the atmosphere has completely changed here. She said, the dining hall is on fire talking about wheelers. She said, I wanna, I wanna get people um, permission to go. And within a couple weeks, we had, we had the program running, uh, but it was the it was the um, you know just getting the first people out, and they came back and they were so happy, and they were mo their moods were elevated. Um, it was just amazing. It was it was amazing. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's pretty. Amazing. And so, what tell us about the process because it isn't just you put people in a chair and take them to the bike path. There are several steps for safety and for. Yeah, there's there's yeah, the safety right. steps and there's also the social part of it. So, um, you know, part of the whole program is it's not just taking them out for a ride. It's the volunteers show up 
at Island Home. There's a, a volunteer for every resident that's going out. You help them, you know, put their, you know, put their suntan lotion on or their sunglasses. You know, get them ready. Hi, how are you? Make sure they're strapped in okay. Um, and and they they love that. They just love, um, you know, seeing that regular person every every time they go out and. Um, so then what happens is we have a few uh, wheelchairs, the chair part that is left at Island Home. And since we're not allowed to transfer the residents, the nurses put the um, residents in the wheelchair. Sometimes they need to use a lift to get them in the wheelchair so that when we arrive, they're ready. They're ready in their wheelchair. And then the uh, Island Home van, we used to use NERDA, but we don't, now Island Home is using their own van. So uh, the residents, um, partner up with their volunteer, they get in the Island Home van, and we drive to Don Allen, which is our station mm -hmm. on Pulpus Road. And they are, Don Allen is amazing. Like, honestly, the program would not be possible without them because all of our bikes are stored there, our batteries are charged there. We go there every day um, and are opening their garage door. It was supposed to be their showroom, and it's become the Wheeler's, <laughs> and uh, the Wheeler's, the Wheeler's station. They do have one car in there, but. They have been incredibly generous. And so there are four bike backs there. There are four bike backs, and then uh, the residents get unloaded, and then we hook the wheelchair up to the back of the bicycle, which is a battery assist um, bicycle. Um, so, and the, but at that point, the the person is already in the wheelchair that that's, that's going to be that they're going to be using for the day, right? When they leave, they're the in the wheelchair. Home, we don't transfer anybody, although there are people who can walk from Island Home. Um, who can walk on the bus, they walk off the bus, and then there's a, 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 ch a full chair, a full a bicycle with a wheelchair re ready for them to get into. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so if you're ambulatory, you can walk on, and yes. then you're seated when you get to Don Allen. Right. And, it, and then, again, the volunteer makes sure that they get safely back on the bus. So everyone's always one-to-one. -one. Yes, it's one-on-one. -on -one. So and is that so? The volunteer is the person who is actually like doing the like the driving of the bike. Yes, and every everyone yeah the pedal uh, pedaler and everyone's trained. They go through three training sessions. It's about six hours. Um, so well, it's each, a motorized assist, but there is but the person is pedaling. You need to pedal to to activate the battery. Oh, I see. Um, I see. So you need to be pedaling it. Um, but every volunteer. When they get trained, they they need they get a chance. The first thing they do is they are a passenger, so they understand how vulnerable you feel, you know, in the chair. They understand why you want to be a certain length away from the road before you cross it. Um, they understand why you want to use control going down a hill. All the things, you know, all of a sudden they're you know, you realize like, okay, you know. <laughs> you can't get out of their wheelchair and you need to trust the person who's driving you. And so um, they get chances to sit in the chair and also to be a peddler. Um, yeah. And, uh, and the vol so where did the volunteers, like have you, uh, have they come from all over? Do they tend to be older folks? Do they tend to be, who are the volunteers? So the volunteers are, um, well, we have an age prerequisite of 21 years old. Yeah. Um, and I would say it's, 21 to 70. We've got some 70 uh, volunteers really? in their seven, 70s. But I would say most of the people are, I would say most of the volunteers are like 50 plus, 40 plus. It, I mean, it, is it varies. How many um, younger people are, have, have signed up? We've got though. some younger people. Um, this year we have some people in their 20s. It really does, I mean, it's the whole, it's a whole range. It was very cute this year. I did have a 90-year-old call up and say she wanted to volunteer, and I was like, "Oh, do you mean you want to go out for a ride?" And she was like, "No, I wanna, I wanna be a volunteer." And and somebody did tell me that she was the most fit 90-year-old they've ever met. She rides her bicycle every day. Um, but she then she, thought she might be a crossing guard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then she called me back and she said, "You know, I've discussed it with my family and they don't think it's a good idea." But you know what? I really loved that. Um, somebody wanted to, you know, do that at that age, you know, I mean, it's, because it is battery assist. I mean, really all you need is balance, you know, good eyesight and balance. Right, right. And you have this huge range of people and they're all on board. They're all on board. So how many, over, did you say you run this every day? 
Well, no. so um, this year we're doing Monday through Wednesday, but in yeah. the past it's been Monday through Friday. Yeah. Um, but we've just decided to do three days, have solid teams. Um, we do a lot of training simultaneously, so we have a fourth bike that we use for training. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the training a little bit? So if I'm volunteering, what does the training consist of? So you would um, arrive at, you sign up for training, and then yeah. you arrive at Don Allen, and then um, we just take you through how the bicycles are hooked up. It's, it's important to just, you know, hook them up right, and um, how to turn them on, how to operate them. Um, so you just, you get three sessions that are about an hour and a half or two hours each to practice doing wide turns, And also loading downhills. the people, you know, loading into the, the chair in. and right. being conscientious of putting their feet in the things and drawing their arms through because right. you can't expect, I mean, some of them need yes. help doing that. So yes. that's my favorite part. Yeah. It's like really loading people in. Yeah. Well, and it's just the, it's just building that relationship with the resident. Yeah. And they, you know, they enjoy being touched and having their hands touched and is your is your seatbelt on right? And it's just a it's it's a way to be loving, and um, you know they really enjoy it. And it's a way to be loving in a really, I want to say like an active way. In an active so way. it isn't like you're just going to to the island home and right. kind of sitting with somebody going, oh, how's the day? And of course that's really hard if folks. Well, I think when there's an activity and right. an activity involved, it just makes it more. People are more comfortable with that. Um, so I think that that's a, a reason why it's a popular volunteer activity because you're doing something together. Um, you don't. Some people love to be chatty. Some people love chatting, and they have their. <laughs> and then other people don't even really want to have a conversation. They just want to be with somebody, right. and they just. So some of the rides are quiet rides, and some of the rides are singing rides, and um, you know. His, you know, t talking about their history or just what's going on in their day or... And is the route always the same from Don or do you just go all over? Well, so we do have, I would say, three routes that we do. Yeah. Um, so it depends on if we want to go for ice cream or we want to go farm. to the driving range. Um, I will say um, Surfside Road is a popular route and um, Marshall Thompson at the shack gives us complimentary water and ice cream every day, which is just amazing. And so what I will say is that it's a community, this is a community program. Like it wouldn't be possible without the volunteers, Don Allen. The bike shop. The bike shop, Nantucket Bike Shop does all of our repairs for free. Wow. Um, Jody, the bike mechanic there, his um, grandmother, Myrtle, was one of our first wheelers and she was 100. <laughs> and they love the program. So, and now we have some of the, um, like Kip's mom is a wheeler now. She works at right. Don Allen. So it's really nice to be able to, you know, just um, just have a, bringing parents of the employees out is really right. wonderful, yeah. Right. Now, ha have, have you gotten any requests from other places who are tr who've tried to replicate this? Has this gone anyplace oh, else? Oh, yes, so that's sure. exciting. It, it, this whole thing is pretty exciting. Um, so we've had, I say we've had a few babies. Um, there's been a program that started in Bloomfield, Illinois, in Port, Portland, Maine. And what I love about Nantucket is like, people come to Nantucket, they see an idea, and they're like, oh my gosh, I wanna do that in my community. It's amazing. And so the fact that like we started it here, and people have gone and brought it to their community, I love that. And we've helped them, um, you know, given them, you know, uh, where you get the bikes, here's where you get the insurance, here's the um, uh, checklist for the uh, rules for the road. or you know, And there are right. also All the little um, business cards in the back yeah. of the bike. So if somebody, stu you know, at, at Surfside, they'll say, oh, that's great, and here's a card. Um, so, so they, they can go to the up. website, yeah, and look up, yeah. But it's just yeah. wonderful. Like, we go to Moore's End Farm and, and I remember one of the residents was like, I don't like the tomatoes at Island Home. They're just not juicy. And I was like, you know, let's go, let's go get some tomatoes. Get some tomatoes. And flowers. So we'll get tomato we'll go to Moore's End Farm and we disconnect the bike from the 
from the wheelchair and we wheel them into Moore's End Farm they and they, mm-hmm. it, they disconnect. And so we pick out, you know, vegetables or a, a big hit is flowers. So um, which, which it's just really like? sweet. Yeah. Which bouquet would you like? So we have a charge there and um, we're allowed, we, we charge there um, so the residents can get what they would like. And it's just, it's really special. So you did that initial big hit because you had to buy the bikes and stuff, yes. and obviously, and then you're working on volunteers. But there's obviously some kind of run rate to all of this, right? You got okay. So I'm. You got this uh, and that. I would love to mention the Congregational Church pays for oh, our let's insurance. Let's mention the Congregational Church. That's yeah, great. Yeah, they too. pay for our insurance every year. They have for like the past four or five years, which um, they had a lot of residents that were members of the congregation and. Yeah. They, I mean, that's amazing. That is such a, that's, our, that's really our biggest expense is insurance every year. Um, so they pay that. And then we've had other people donate money. Like our fourth bicycle was somebody saw the, saw us out on the road and just said, oh my gosh, like that's the most amazing program. My son has cerebral palsy. Is there any way um, you could take him out for a ride. And we, we do do community rides. We use the fourth bike for community rides or we have separate days for community rides. A but community ride where you, where you would just stop at somebody's house? Well, it's just not an island home resident. Anybody who wants to go out can, can sign up for a community ride. I see. Well, we took this boy out with a friend of his who also had cere- cerebral palsy and the mom was in tears. She just said, "You just wouldn't believe it. I have not heard. I have not heard him laughing like that, in I can't even remember." And so she donated ten thousand dollars to buy a bicycle, and that's happened twice. So, um, you know, we've been we've been really blessed that way. Yeah. People just see it and they're like, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing." So we also use the um, bicycles to for Tolji Wood, which is a Camp, it's called Camp Told You Would, and it's a two-week-long program for disabled adults. And um, the wheelchair biking, is, the Nantucket Wheelers, is like one of the highlights of their trip as well. So we get our volunteers to come. They told you would uh, folks meet us at Don Allen, and then we go off. Or we bring the we bring the bikes to Jetty's cool, Beach. Yeah. We've brought them to Jetty's Beach, and then we we take them out from there. So. And that's on the opposite, you know, opposite side because Monday and Wednesday wheelers go out in the morning, mm-hmm. and Tuesday in the afternoon. I'd love right. to see a Thursday afternoon yeah. if we get things ready. I think but. when, uh, like now, more volunteers are rolling in. Like some of our volunteers are seasonal, but once we get all the seasonal people here, we can do another training and then add Thursday afternoons. Yeah. And is there anything? It's just amazing. Is there anything that y- you would? If you had the resources that you would do that you would do differently, that you would grow, is there anything? Um, well, the only thing I think that would make the program better yeah. is if, and when the, when the bike path comes right past Island Home, we're not going to need a van, so we're going to be able to go out. We could go out whenever; it wouldn't have to right. be so scheduled. Um, people could go out one on one with a crossing guard. You would just go right from Island Home. Um, now it has to be more organized just because we need to get to the station. Right, you have to get out of the island home. Right. And, and there have been families that have biked with their residents. Well, like your dad. Yeah, like my, and I know my mom and Ted Anderson went out one time. Yes. And so, you know, I've tried to encourage people to try to hook up with us and see if right. you can go for a ride. But then you have to have the volunteers. It's the same thing. Right. Um, takes a little coordination, but mm-hmm. there's nothing like going for a bike ride with your wheelchair bound, you know, well, parents it was or like grandparents. When, when um, Allison's dad, um, um, it was right before, right before he passed, but I remember all the kids went out, her family, and they had like, um, oh. they had him go under a tunnel of, with, didn't they, didn't you like make a tunnel and you like yeah. rode through a tunnel? Yeah, tunnel of people. And we went to the to the um, Life Ship Saving Museum because right. you can take the chairs off and right. bring them right into the museum and look around. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the most amazing things I've ever heard. I, 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 Allison had referred to this a few times, mm-hmm. and I, but I couldn't kind of like picture it, kind right. of like how it had happened. But it's just grown into the, and so it's just a staple now. So it's been around for a number of years. Yeah, our, right. seven, our seventh year. Right. 
And, and how much of your time do you spend doing this? Like a lot. Well, I mean, this year I'm trying to um, delegate a little bit more. I actually thought I was going to be moving off island and that didn't really work. I got married and we were going to spend more time off island. And so um, I figured that a good way to kind of make a transition was to assign a captain for every day. Mm -hmm. So each day has somebody in charge who's been on in, been with the program for a while. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of helping to make more of a transition. And then just trying to get everything on the web. Like I just got all the forms for new volunteers and the sign up link on the training page. Because I, normally I was, I was responding to emails for that. Um, so there's a sign up so, genius so you can sign up to volunteer and check into your times. And then right. there's also a volunteer interface where if you yeah. need to get a sub, there are subs available. And so yeah, we try to make it automated, right? Yeah, it's yeah. getting more, auto I mean, I'm just trying to get it more automated. Um, so. yeah, it's one of the goals of the exercise, because you're dealing with a lot of volunteers, you're constantly training new people, you've got this huge coordination thing. I guess that's what I just find is so amazing. It's not only the trips themselves, but you've got this whole back office that's all running like well, on Well, so what we did on was on uh, one of the one of the expenses, the startup expenses was a um, it was like $2,000 to do a custom app for the website mm -hmm. so that we have a calendar um, everybody's scheduled in there, but then if you if you can't make your shift, you can go online and you request a sub. That email will go out to everybody who's on the team. Mm -hmm they can log on and fill the sub request. Because we, like the first, the first season, it was like the phone call was ringing. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, I can't, oh no, I can, I can, I, I'm gonna be off on, oh no, I'm not. I, I couldn't keep track of it. Of course. I just could just... not, it was like everybody's personal life and like there's last minute changes or whatever it was, I was like, uh -huh. So the app is really helpful. Um, that's and, made but, a huge difference. And that's and then, what makes it, makes it kind of sustainable because it yes. means that nobody has to be crazy trying to figure all that stuff. And there's right. No, yeah, there's no, there's no, like you don't have to hire someone to facilitate the program, which right. is, you know, would be nice, but not, you know. Well, I feel like, I feel like, you know what, the volunteers all have ownership. Like they, yeah. everybody's in, like they, um, they, we make it work. Nobody's getting paid. We don't want people to get paid. It's about relationships, it and it, and it works just because everybody makes it work. Um, One thing that I that I really love, and you see more and more of it, is that people who start off, people don't even know where our island home is, mm -hmm. and it's a couple of just just this year, someone couldn't find me to meet up to go for a training because right. they'd never been there. So it brings people down East Creek Road, and then. For instance, one of the wheelers has started a knitting program at our island home. So yes. here, you know, whenever she's here, she knits with the residents, and it's a big, it's a popular thing. So yeah. the more people that go through the doors there and to see it and get and comfortable, all, yeah, and visiting and to bring the yeah, yeah, it's just it's just amazing. And you have real people from our island home, out in the real world, out in the you now. That's one of the standard stereotypes, you know, as you go to a nursing home. And it's like you're crossing this moat by, right. you know, you now it was nice knowing you, and you never come back. Right. And occasionally people will go visit. But the idea is this is actually a program that you'd actually see them. Well, out. every day we're in there, like a group is in right. there, and it's just, I mean, yeah, some people, and some people yeah. don't have relatives on Nantucket. And so, right. like, we're there, people that they see every week. We're the, right. we're the person that comes to visit them every week. It's a, that's a big deal. Um, the other thing was, um, I remember like, what, you know, are there any complaints about the program or whatever? And it was like, well, Myrtle got to go out twice in a row this week. And that is just not fair. Like they could become like kindergartners. Like if, if, if they get rained out on their right. day right. and they don't get to go out and then somebody got to go out twice. And, um, so they love it. They don't like missing their turn. And, um, the thing about the activities is that once the program ends in the, um, once it gets too cold, if it's yeah. below 60 degrees, we can't yeah. go out. Um, you know, they get kind of depressed that the program's over. Oh, and sure. so yeah, some sure. of the wheelers have, through the winter, like Mary, started um, doing knitting programs. So she does a knitting class like once a week. And then we have another person who reads. Um, just so just to, keep, just to keep it going through the winter, you know, this keep people visiting. This is one of the most visiting. amazing things I've ever heard. Oh. 
No, no, thank you. This was just great. Thank you. Th this was great. So thank you so much. Thank this you was for just me this was a treat. No, thank you, Allison. Well, thank that's you, pretty Walter. amazing. Um, for many, any of you who didn't know about this, right? So this isn't a big, you know, pitch for a huge amount of money. It is about volunteering, right, and connecting with these folks. And it's one of those things that really makes Nantucket special. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary on Nantucket. Thank you.